Hey Sean, how do you get on bigger poles? I'm struggling to get on bigger poles. How do I do it? I'll tell you right now. Welcome to the Pole Vault Vlog. We talk everything po do, do I really need to say this every week? Maybe. It might be your first time here. We talk everything Pole Vault. Let's do it. If you guys follow me on social media and you're kind of in this Pole Vault community on Monday, I launched a video. Let, let's start over. <laughs> That's what it looks like when I rewind my face. I launched a video on Monday called I Am Enough. Kelsey Abbey, professional pole vaulter and Olympian in last year's Olympics, created a challenge just to be kind to yourself and spread some mental health awareness around the world. And then Mary Saxer, another professional pole vaulter, Melissa Gurgle, another professional pole vaulter, and Katie Najat, another professional pole vaulter, took this idea and ran with it and created this really cool movement on Instagram. And me being so involved in mental health in the pole vault community, I reached out and asked if there was any way I could help, even if it was just creating a, a stupid little video. So they seemed pretty excited about it, so I made this video. Body image is something that I have really struggled with. I've never been in love with the size of my legs and the size of my butt. I've always wished I had a smaller butt, smaller legs. I'm constantly comparing myself to uh, the girls that I'm competing against. I was to the point where I cared more about how I looked while I competed um, as opposed to the results. And I think you, we should all do it. I'll post a video at the end of this video. I will put it as a link in the description below and I'll put it up here or over here, one of these sides. It'll pop right out and you guys can click on it now and check it out. I'd ex I'll explain more, but you can just watch the video and get the gist of it. So if you do it, hashtag Team Hoot, hashtag Enough, and hashtag I Am Enough. You're awesome. Also, a few weeks ago, I was asked to be a part of a podcast. I've never done a podcast because I'm used to editing myself to make me look cooler. Which doesn't ever work anyways. I got to talk with Apex Pole Vaulting. I'll put a link in the description below. We talked about all sorts of cool stuff from, from coaching to why I walked away from competing professionally and to like what's next. Check it out. Let me know if it's cool and let's see if we can get more listens on that than all the other pole vault videos they have. That would be great. Give me some feedback. I like feedback, and since it's my first one, all feedback is welcome. Also, I've been getting a lot of questions about foam rollers and things like that, so last week I made a video about all the foam rollers that I've used and my experience with them. Now, I've had a lot of experience with foam rollers over the years. The first one I used was these little white ones, and the more you'd roll on it, all the foam would start to squish down and it wouldn't do anything anymore. It, didn't, it ended up being like a bag of packing peanuts. I will also put that in the description below. Check it out, and if you guys get one of these foam rollers, just go through the links, please. It helps me be able to continue to make these. I'm not ever gonna do that again. I apologize. Okay, so let's talk about the question I get just about more than anything else lately. Sean, how do I get on a bigger pole? There's only one way to get on a bigger pole, and that is to create more energy. That's it. That's how you get on longer poles, that's how you get on bigger poles. That's it, super easy. I'm out of here. Just kidding, I'm gonna stick around and tell you some more. So to create more energy, you can either add speed and fix your technique. To increase speed, you can train more, lift weights, incre increase mobility, get a sweet little tailwind, that'll help too. And for technique, you, you pole vault a whole bunch. You learn better technique and how not to lose energy from the run. You can do underwater pole vaulting, you can do certain drills. Uh, there's all these crazy devices out there that can help you do certain things too. Straight pole drills, short runs, all this stuff can help with your technique. Listening to your coach is also a really good one. Ooh. High school programs run into this a lot. They have like a 13130 and then a 13170. And then the kid's trying to get on this next pole and it's way too big. It's just a massive jump and they don't have poles to fill in the middle. Sorry, there's a dog barking. So the easiest way to fix this problem is to have a smaller progression. Smaller progressions are easier than taking a big jump, right? I mean, that makes sense. Let's say you're doing the monkey bars and you have to go from ring one to two to three to four to five. That's really easy, you're like, Yeah, I'm really good at the monkey bars. Look at me monkeying. I'm monkeying around. My middle name is Chimpanzee. But if you try to jump one to five, it's gonna be a little harder. Some people might be able to do it. Majority, eh, depends how far the monkey bar is. You just, it's harder, right? So the best advice I have is the pole, vault, the pole vault community is awesome. Reach out to other schools and programs and see if you guys can borrow a pole maybe for a day or two. 
make that progression a little bit smaller. And then you guys build this little relationship and you can share poles, because poles aren't cheap. But by, able, by being able to do that, you're essentially helping out the kids, helping out your program, and you both grow from it. And then the last little trick that the majority of people overlook, and coaches, is changing your run. Let's say you're at five lefts, this pole's too small, the next pole's a 20 pound jump, it is way too big. Maybe go back to six lefts. A longer run doesn't always mean you're gonna be faster, but it can. Add some speed, and maybe that 20 pound jump will be more like a 10 pound jump, which is way more manageable. It's like skipping one ring instead of two in those monkey bar things. Oh. Or if you have like a 40 pound jump, and there's no way you're gonna get on that pole, but the pole you're on is too small and you're at five lefts, maybe go to four and work on that same pole so your technique gets better. Remember, technique will help you add more energy into that pole. So get better technique, and then eventually you can kind of play with your run and the pole situation to make it work. So one more time, you can always add run and try that bigger pole or subtract run and stay on the same pole and work on technique. One adds speed, the other will force you to work on technique. Speed and technique, energy. Let's review some videos. All right, the first video is from Mike and this is Ellie and Holy crap. I watched this video and I've never seen a kid so young oops, that's the wrong button, have this kind of control of the pole. Hitting the quad. Staying tight. Right hand. So good. So really, I'm gonna sound like a genius when this happens, but I'm really not. If you watch the takeoff, yeah, the plant's just a little late and we're a little low at takeoff, so that's just making everything a lot harder. It's like we're hitting the box and then planting the pole. We need to plant the pole, lock it, and then jump into the, into the pole. And that's gonna change absolutely everything. Because the second half, so freaking good. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Good jump. All right, this next video is from Joel. And Joel sent me a video a couple weeks ago and I gave him some things to work on. It's throwing that bottom hand, create space away from his head. And he says he's been working on it and it does. It looks better. It's coming out and then it still comes in a little later. I just wanna see more. So we have that arm up and then you can see like right here when I wanna see it from you, from here, I wanna see it thrown at the crossbar both hands, but instead he throws one and pulls that arm in to get upside down really fast, which is really good at getting upside down, but it's bad for keeping energy into the pole. So if we watch this, yeah, he's just pulling it in a little too early. So during the swing, both arms out. And then if I was to time this out, right about here I'd start pulling that arm in. See, see the difference? You're so close, man. And that bungee's at 17 feet or 520. That's just, I mean, you do those little things, it's gonna get you deeper into the pit, you're gonna have more control of the pole, and you're gonna feel like a million bucks. Next video comes from Adam. This is a great video, because I've been getting this email a lot, too. It's like, Sean, I have one coach telling me I need to swing right away off the ground. I got another coach telling me I need to pause and delay my swing. And I got another coach telling me this, what one's right? And there is no right answer. I mean, some kids need to hear one thing, another kid needs to hear something else. It depends on what your jump doing and what, um, and where you are in that jump. So this is from Adam, and this is a great example of that. We are swinging off the ground. We're like leaning, we hit the pole, and then we lean back right away. And by doing that, we're losing half of that swing, you know, that leg's right here, you know, where at this position, if we were hitting it with our chest, then our leg would be back here and we'd have more energy to get upside down. You know, cir circle and geometry is fun if you're into that kind of thing. He is one of those guys I would tell, I want you to try and delay that swing. And you know, you're not really delaying the swing, you might just be put into a different position. It's just one of those cues that's gonna help him out a lot. And by doing that, you know, I told him to hit his hands so that happens, you know? And there's a lot of ways to tell him, you know, delay the swing, hit your hands, lead with your chest, all mean the same thing. We're all looking for the exact same thing. It's just the pole's not going forward very fast, and that's what we want. Oof, you're gonna have fun when you figure that out, man. All right, this one came to me from Andrea, and 
same idea we were kind of talking about in the last one. This is one of those examples where they were saying he's striding out at the takeoff, and this happens a lot, a lot. I get a lot of emails about this too. And it looks like for him, people are always trying to put their foot where it's supposed to go, right? I mean, kids naturally do that. It's called it's called tracking. Move him up six inches to a foot, so he has to speed up and can accelerate into the takeoff. That'll be the number one thing. And then have him drop his pole a little sooner. By having it drop really fast, it, it can make you stride out at the end and throw your run all off. And that's gonna be the huge thing with that. So we want the pole to go to vertical as fast as we can. And right now, since we're leaning back at takeoff right away, the pole's not moving forward very fast. And then they stall out and they fall on the bar. We want that pole to go forward. I gave her the example of if you're on a swing set and you're trying to swing and go as far as you can. You know, kids used to jump off the swing set. You probably used to do that too. I still do that. So when you're swinging, if you get off of the swing too early, you're just gonna fall, right? Nothing's gonna happen. So you gotta ride that out and try and get energy and get the pole, not the pole, but the swing moving as fast as you can that way, the direction you wanna go. Pole vault, same way. If you stop the momentum of the pole going forward, you're not gonna fly very far or high. So the idea is you want to swing and move that pole as fast and aggressive as you can forward. That's why we run first, so we can be able to do that. That'll stop the stalling, but I like to fix things in the way they happen. So move a little closer on the run, fix the pole drop, and then move the pole in that order. Last but not least, we have Vincent. Good jump, man. So I don't tell many people this, and I told him this too. I want you to think about Superman diving into the pole. That way we hit those hands a little harder and we push everything up and forward. Moving that pole as fast vertical as you can is gonna be the best thing you can do. And you're gonna PR instantly because <laughs> that little fix is gonna have a huge impact on your jump. Good job, man. Thanks again for everyone who's sending videos. You are all awesome. If you would like me to review a video, uh, if you just go into the description of this video, it'll be right there. Or you can go to team-shoot.com, go to products, and bam, all the stuff you could ever want is right there. If you would like to be a member of Team Hoot, same thing, go to team-shoot.com. In the upper right corner, it says join Team Hoot. It's that easy. By joining Team Hoot, you will get updates and information on, the, on things that happen, camps, all sorts of stuff, um, and you have input on how I grow Team Hoot. And you get cool discounts if I figure out what else I can like make for you. Also, if you go to the bottom, if you go to team and enter it, and you go to the very bottom, uh, I added a donation button. I got a bunch of emails after the last week's video. I appreciate all the kind words. You guys are awesome. Um, and a lot of people were like, I wanna donate to this because you're providing good information. How do I do it? And I was like, I feel guilty accepting donations. And one guy was like, well, you're not accepting donations while not doing anything in return. I'm not just giving you money. You're you're creating these vlogs and I would like to help be able to keep them going. And I was like, huh, never thought of it like that. So there's now a donation button if you guys would like to do that. Last thing and then we'll get out of here. I have been playing with the idea of every fourth week doing a live stream on YouTube. I would sit there maybe for a half hour, maybe an hour and just answer questions that you guys had. YouTube does this really cool thing where you can do live streams and I thought it'd be a cool way to do a Q&A and you guys could just talk to me, ask me whatever you want and I would answer back for you. So let me know if you would be interested in something like that and if there is enough interest, I'll be more than happy to do it. Um, if there's not, no sweat off my back, I just thought it might be cool to try something different where there's some actual interaction between just me in the comments and me talking into this camera, which feels kind of stupid. Again, go do the I am enough challenge. You guys are awesome. team I don't know what else to say. If you feel like I'm forgetting something, foam rollers and all that other good stuff. Life is meant to be experienced, and curiosity will get you there. Let me know what I should talk about next week. Ooh, yeah, yeah.